Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm here with the HP Mini 5102, which is sort of a business and education-oriented netbook. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice on this particular model is that it has a fairly thick uh, screen, and that's because this is actually outfitted with a touchscreen display, um, which works reasonably well in some situations, but has some uh, quirks. Uh, first thing is that the action of sort of typing and then reaching up to tap at the screen is uh, a little bit less than intuitive. It doesn't swivel, it doesn't work in tablet mode the way that uh, some other netbooks and laptops do. So, you know, it's always sort of going to be this kind of motion where if you're going to draw on the screen or reach up to it, you're going to be reaching up from a typing position. Um, there is also, of course, a touchpad, so you don't ever even have to use the touchscreen, but it's there if you do want it. Um, it's a capacitive multi-touch display, which means that it'll recognize multiple finger inputs, and um, it also uh, recognizes the electrical impulses from your finger, as opposed to a tap from the back of your finger or a stylus. So it's more like the touchscreen display that you would find on an iPhone or certain smartphones, and less like a traditional uh, cheap uh, resistive tablet screen. Um, so when you're launching certain applications, I find it works reasonably well, and you'll notice as you tap, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's like a little white uh, spot that shows up on the screen, and the little um, circle flashes around it, and that makes it easy to sort of see where it is that you're tapping, because basically your finger is covering the thing that you're tapping on most of the time. Um, in terms of day-to-day -day use, though, when you're pulling up applications such as Google Reader, you can't do this sort of iPhone thing that you would expect, which is to drag the screen and flip up. Instead, you're, you're going to need to rely on the scroll bar on the side of the window, which works reasonably well, but again, you sort of have to tap fairly precisely there. And since you're using your fingertip, I mean, yeah, the, the tip of your finger instead of a stylus, it's not quite as precise. And you'll see if you try to use the, um, your fingernail or something that would be more precise, it just doesn't recognize it at all. Another thing that I've noticed is, thankfully, unlike some touchscreens that I've used on netbooks, this does recognize sort of a press and hold for a right-click feature. So, uh, say I want to open a new tab, and sorry about that. Visit Lilliputing. And then say I wanted to open in a different window. I could press hold, let go, and then you'll see open in a uh, new tab. And there it pops up. Now, you'll notice that sometimes it does take a couple of presses to get it right because I've noticed that you have to be pretty precise and it's hard to be precise on small areas like a... Um, tab that's only a couple of pixels wide here when you're pressing with the tip of your finger. Um, it is something that you can get used to, but it takes a little while. So you can double tap. Single tap. press and hold, and when you press and hold, you see a little um, arrow sort of uh, circle opens up and stays there to let you know that you've pressed and hold. So it has most of the functionality that you would want from a touchscreen display. Um, my main concern is that it's a little bit difficult to be precise, even with some touchscreen optimizations that uh, HP has put in here that, for example, show you the little circle so you know where you are. Um, and the right-clicking abilities. It's still kind of difficult to be precise, but the biggest problem is that it's sort of a weird position to reach up. Um, sort of after doing it a while, your arm will start to hurt. Uh, it's just much more natural, I think, to reach down and use the touchpad for most situations. Um, just to show you that it is a multi-touch display, though, let's go ahead and open up Paint, and you can see I can draw single lines or double lines. Triple lines confuse it.
And as you can see, I'm trying to drag to make this larger here. It's just a little difficult to do with the touch screen, but it's very easy to do with the mouse. And if you were to try to do any sort of handwriting recognition, which I wouldn't really expect you to do on this sort of device because, again, it doesn't work in tablet mode, if you put one hand down and start drawing with the other hand, you're going to cause some sort of confusion here because it's going to recognize your palm as one input and your uh, drawing finger as another. Um, if your finger's in the air and you're not resting your palm on the device, you shouldn't have any real problems. But it just doesn't work if your palm's on the device. But again, it doesn't swivel, you can't use it in tablet mode, so I don't really see you using it the way that you would a normal tablet, where you would put your hand out, put the palm down, and start writing. Um, but it also means that while text input is actually not bad, um, it's sort of an awkward thing because there is nowhere to rest your palm. So uh, sort of a mixed bag. I think it's, uh, it's probably one of the better uh, relatively inexpensive capacitive touchscreen displays that I've used. Uh, the right-click implementation is excellent. The precision is not great. Uh, the utility of it is something I'm not 100% sold on. So that's something you're going to have to decide whether this is worth spending the extra money on. Um, it's not available on the cheap models that you can get from HP's website for $400 and up. Um, in order to get this touchscreen display, you're going to need to go and customize. And since this is sold through HP Business, that's going to uh, add a couple hundred dollars to the price unless you're a business or educational institution that's going through uh, custom HP channels, in which case you might be able to negotiate a better price on this. Um, so, anyways, just wanted to give you a quick look at the touchscreen. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputing.